Welcome to the Cannon County Chamber Connection. And of course, this show is made possible by DTC Communication with our thanks because uh, they're a real asset to the chamber. My name is Carolyn Motley, and my co host today is Keith Reddy with uh, the uh, Courier. And I am the coordinator for the chamber. I'm sure you all know that by now. I haven't seen you in a while because the last time we taped was in February. And uh, it's uh, strange times right now. <laughs> and it's very hard to um, figure out what activities will be happening and which ones won't because of the virus. And um, the directive from the governor uh, discourages gatherings on county property of 50 or more at this time. Now that may change in July, who knows, but um, we just hope that everybody's staying safe and trying to do what's right with this because we're dealing with something that we really don't know anything about. So it's really hard to deal with it. I do have guests today. Uh, we have a new girls basketball coach at the high school, and we have Miss uh, Coach Bud Brandon with us today. Thank you. And you are really new to Cannon County, aren't you? Yes. Somewhat, <laughs> somewhat, somewhat. I, I am. I've only been up here uh, uh, at night. Uh, in the past, in the past uh, couple of weeks, I've, I've been up here twice. Okay. And. I've never been up here in the daytime. It's always been at night and because of basketball, right. you know. And so I didn't really, I, I knew it was a pretty town, but it's, it's one of the most beautiful towns I think I've ever, even today, driving in. It's And special. there's not an ugly way to come into it. I don't care which way you come in, the scenery is gorgeous. Even it Hurricane is. Creek Road, I came in that way, and that was that was a beautiful drive there. And now that you've already got the nighttime thing fixed out, you won't get lost during the day. No. No it's way. not going to get lost. Yeah. I get lost in places at Just night. Just fine, John Bragg All of a sudden, Highway. Yeah. <laughs> so during the day, it makes it easier. <laughs> and we also have another guest, and um, he is Mr. Freddie Curtis, and I'm sure you've all seen Freddie before because I've had him on the show before, and he really needs his own show. DTC. Oh, he yeah. needs his <laughs> own Thank you, Ms. Carolyn, for keeping that <laughs> And he mind. is our superintendent of schools. Uh, but I guess um, I'll ask you the question that everybody wants to know. Where'd you come from? Well, uh, I was born in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Oh, okay. And uh, my mom and dad are uh, both uh, from Murfreesboro, born in Murfreesboro. Um, we had roots. Both uh, uh, Brandon and Clark are from, uh, Cannon is from this area. Right. And, um, and you've coached before, right? Yes, ma'am. Um, well, uh, we want you to tell us. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> well, I, and I graduated from Middle Tennessee State University okay. and uh, grew up in the game as a, as a son of a coach. Uh, and uh, humbly, may I say, he... Oh, that's he was be my pressure. <laughs> he was my mentor and pressure. You're right. I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to win too, you know. So, uh, just, I was brought up in a great environment of, of 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 the women's game, and and I remember Coach Harris as a as a kid uh, going, and remember him coaching. And uh, then uh, after I graduated uh, from Middle Tennessee State. Uh, my first coaching experience was at Carroll Oakland Elementary, which is 231 north of Lebanon, mm -hmm. uh, a little K through 8 school, and that was a great, that was a great experience. And I was there one year, and um, coaching-wise, I got spoiled the first year. Uh, the girls' team went undefeated, and you had I'm, talent, I'm like, didn't you? <laughs> we 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 had talent, and uh, at one point during the the uh, this is early season. Right. I, I was kind of pushing them, I guess, and I had some talking about quitting. And I, and I did have, <laughs> we were in the locker room and three had quit. And I said, let me tell you all something. If anybody else has got quitting on their mind, 
there's the door and you need you, you need to go on because we yeah. I don't want to be around quitters. Well, about four of them got up. Don't bang the table because they can oh, hear I'm it. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> so it, it makes me mad still to think about it. I had four more and and then I just played it down and they all came back. They all came back because they loved the game of basketball and we went on and and had a great year and. Then the next year, uh, by the way, I taught math, uh, Mr. Curtis. Wonderful. Uh, taught math that year. and Don't get that very often, do you, Freddie? I'm a math teacher and a coach. Reading, <laughs> I had a reading and spelling class, and I coached boys and girls basketball. I don't really know how I got through that year, to be honest with you, but when you're— They were getting your money's worth, <laughs> Coach, no doubt about that. Yeah, and I, you know, it, was a, it was a great experience. Then the next year, um, I was very fortunate to go to Mount Juliet. Um, and I was the uh, freshman girls coach for six years down there and was under Tommy Martin at Mount Jet High School who just had a, one of the best programs as he still have had one of the better programs in the in the state of Tennessee. So I was under Tommy Martin for six years and on the bench with him and I may say it was difficult when we played my dad and and I was just assistant coach, but still shaking his hand after a loss or a win was kind of weird. <laughs> but it was, it was just good memories. And <clears throat> then I came back to Walter J. Baird for um, 11 years. I was there 11 years as the, I started out as the uh, girls coach, and then I went to the boys the last five or six years. And, and uh, uh, Mark Willoughby, which a lot of uh, viewers probably know Mark, uh, he was the principal of Walter J. Baird, and he and I are still good friends. Alexandria guy that I grew up with. Uh, his mm -hmm. mother was my second grade and sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Willoughby. Well. So I've known Mark. He's known me most all of our lives. Yeah. So, and, uh, so, so well, it's a small world, isn't it? It really <laughs> is. And then, and then um, I, I, I have to mention uh, Luke Willoughby, and and Luke was uh, was my ma our manager, mm -hmm. and. and uh, and he has those memories, and we had some uh, two. We won two James C. Hill State Championships. Luke's there. broadcast a lot of a lot of games for WJLE in Smithville. Oh, so uh, oh. great friend. Yeah, he's he's a great guy, and in the law business now, and I hear he's really doing well, and just so proud of him. Uh, and uh, after 11 years there, uh, they they were building Wilson Central High School on 840 in. One Sunday, I remember driving out there, it was under construction, and I kind of thought, you know, I'm ever going to break into high school coaching. This may not be a bad place. I need to do it. <laughs> it's They're that, new. <laughs> yeah, either, either do it or stay in junior high, but, but it was a challenge, you know, and I like challenges. I love challenges. Um, without challenges, I think life's boring. And uh, uh, here at Cannon County is, 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 is a real challenge here that I'm extremely looking forward to. But uh, anyway, uh, so I went to Wilson Central for um, uh, 13 years uh, coaching girls basketball. And uh, we started out, we had tryouts. I didn't have an assistant coach. They, they, they missed the, the hiring. I'm not sure what happened, but. Uh, and then Daddy had just well, he he had somewhat retired, and and I said, Daddy, just come out here. I need an extra eye on on tryouts. And so he came out there, and then two or three days goes by, and he, of course, he he loved that girls basketball, and the girls he had a good rapport with them, and and then he stayed around and 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 just stayed on staff, which I'm so glad. It was a great experience, and. And uh, he said, well, bud, he said, you know, I, I, I think this, this could be a good thing, but it may be a downside of it, too. I said, I don't care. The final product is what we're, we want. We want a final product. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so basically in the interview, the, the principal, he said, you know, Coach Brandon, do you think you can bring a state championship team here in five years? And I'm, I'm kind of like, the question. I said, well, I'll say this. If, if we don't do that, I won't be happy. <laughs> Well, year three comes up. Um, thir on third year, we went to the state tournament, Murphy Center in the Glass House. We went year four, state tournament, Glass House. And we always had on the top of the board in the dressing room uh, our goal, team goal, and it was to get to the state tournament. 
Well, going into the fifth year, the girls on their own, as I walked in, I looked on the board and they, they had changed it and, and uh, it said win the state championship. So we had a young team, somewhat, still, but, but uh, we worked hard and we got lucky and that's a story that went itself and, and, and we won it in the fifth year. And that was 06 and then we won it in 08. Uh, 07 was a great team. I don't want to talk about that. That's still a thorn in my side. But we had, uh, I think, six times out of the 13, we went to the state tournament with a brand new school. And uh, I've been blessed to be around good people. And, and, and I want to lead and uh, lead these young ladies to uh, not, just, not just a high school basketball career or made of memories that they'll never forget, but uh, having those memories of, of some great teams and doing some great things. I'll just put it, put it there right now, but very exciting. Well, I will tell you this. I think I told you yesterday when I spoke with you, I had uh, three kids, one girl and two boys, and four grandchildren that all played ball in Cannon County. And over the years, even when they weren't playing, uh, there's some great talent that has come through Cannon County. Yes. There have been teams that excelled as teams and individuals that, also. So that, exactly. You're, you're exactly uh, right. You know, they're, they're basketball-oriented. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes, this is good. And, and you look at even some of the adults <laughs> that are my age and, and, and that I know and have watched through the years. Um, Rick Ensel, I mean, for example, uh, is, is from Cannon County. And, and we've been friends a long time. And he and my dad were very close. and. Uh, they had some really great games, and uh, iron sharpens iron. I, I like saying that because that's what they did with each other, I think, as coaches, and I, I got to watch that. And uh, I think one of the benefits of any basketball program is the earlier you start, and we have junior pro now, and of course, our grammar schools have always been active with basketball teams, and that's where a lot of your talent comes from. It's starting right there. It does, and it's and I think sometimes this is what you're supposed to do. This is what you know, not just we don't want to just talk about Murphy getting to Murphy Center, but I would say here, uh, if I was to drive around today, uh, other than some communities would not be like this. Here, I'm going to bet there's a basketball goal in a lot of driveways, and they're out there practicing and shooting as we're speaking. If I, I still it. have one, and all of mine have graduated college. <laughs> <laughs> you get out there and shoot with them? No, oh. I used to. <laughs> Not so much anymore. I don't run anymore. So you played <laughs> at Carolyn at Cannon County High School? Who, me? Oh, no. I went to school in Colorado, oh, okay. and they didn't have girls teams in junior high or high school. Mm -hmm. They had boys, but not girls. We learned how to pivot mm -hmm. and shoot at the basket. We didn't necessarily always make it. But, but no, but my kids moved down here at an early age. And um, yeah, they took to it right away. Yeah, yeah. So, so but I got to tell you, now I've coached, I've refereed. Boy, have I refereed on more than one occasion. <laughs> That's in grammar school and high school because they never refereed the way I thought it should be done. So right. Well, there's a lot of people like that. That's, what, that's what's great to have fans like that in the gym for support and question the people's the, calls. I'd say the referees didn't always feel that way about it. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I've done all those things. So. Your, well, I think this is great. Go ahead, Keith. I was going to say, your dad, for those that are watching, may not be familiar with your father, but your dad was Campbell Brandon, over 700 wins in, yes, in high school basketball. Mm -hmm. You've got a collective, what, 307 wins right now? I, I, Who knows? I, I honestly couldn't, I couldn't think tell you. When he put the press release out, it was about 307. Mm -hmm. 
the, hope to catch. The, now is that it? You hope Wilson to catch Central the, or is no, that overall? Overall. Yeah, I think Wilson High Central. School. That was at Wilson Central. Oh, was that? Was, was, oh, so we've got to add the ones at Smyrna. Add the ones at Smyrna. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so <laughs> once we add those in, and Walter J. I mean, Walter you got to include Mark Willoughby. I mean, you're going to be way on up there. Oh, we may be up there in a thousand. Who knows? But if we take your high school career, just like your dad's career. You hope to catch catch up to dad as far as the win total before you you retire? I'd say he already has. Well, oh. No, I, no. I'm, his dad's. No, I, I, I've I've um, I know I, I will say this not to uh, not to be a uh, diversion of your question, but uh, there won't be a day goes by where he's not in the gym with me. Right. right. Uh, as far as wins and losses. I just want to make great memories, and the wins, it doesn't, you know, I'm not I'm not really caught up in how many wins and how many losses, and just want to play the best teams out there, because I know we're going to get better if we play good teams. Yeah. And uh, uh, just want a, a good final product, and uh, make good memories. And it's, uh, Well, it's, it's kind of like the theme of the coaches that we've got already in place since uh, the new E3 came into play, you know, where you've got a lot of positive attitudes and the right, and when you do things the right way, the results are gonna come, you it, know, and it, I think that's gonna be what happens with the girls basketball well, program. Well, it helps the odds. The harder, you're, harder you work, the, you know, the uh, better you get. So we just wanna work hard and understand that has to be, that has to, you have to really work hard to, to get lucky and you have to be lucky and that's what uh, you have to bring to the table. And All right. If you want this, you have to do this. Right. So you, that's you, one thing too. That's one thing too. We we stress, and uh, we did, we said that at the at the press conference in regard to excellence that we're engaged in excellence, like Keith was saying. There, the E three engages excellence every day, and our mission certainly is to prepare kids for our future. And we know, and and we certainly believe that uh, Mr. Bud Brandon will do that for our girls program, because and, and when it's all said and done, it's it's about students and progressing them for their futures. And whether it's in athletics or in academics, and uh, and but is is quote semi retired. I don't know if you ever retire, but but <laughs> we, he will be teaching our, our, our three physical education and wellness classes with us on a part time basis, and uh, and then I'm sure he's going to be more than full time basketball coach as he as he comes into this area and raising two grand grand young grandkids that he has uh, his two granddaughters and that mean the world to him and and uh, we're, we're looking forward to seeing them in our gyms too as well but one of the things that, that impressed uh, Courtney Nichols the principal of the Kankakee High School myself um, is not only Bud's, Bud's pedigree if you will or his legacy but his commitment to excellence and that's what we're wanting to see, and that's what we're, we're desiring for Cannon County Schools in the middle of, uh, you know, budget crisis that we're still believing in excellence and no matter what we do. And, and him helping us have to going in his halftime is, is very appreciative. And, uh, but, but also in what he's doing with our, with our girls about working them hard. And that's what is what I think parents are expecting and fans are expecting is that hard work pays off, period. You want the kids that are going to come to practice every day and sometimes come to practice when there isn't practice, but you also want the ones that are going to do that at home. That's right. That's right. It's, um, you know, I think most parents, this is what I have found, that, that uh, they really appreciate the structure and they understand, especially I think in this community, because a lot of, a lot of them played basketball. A lot of their mm -hmm. mothers and grandmothers, and so they understand that they it's not just about basketball. Because at some point in time, you can play and play and play. It's like a clock. At some point in time, the clock is going to stop when, when you play, and then after that, hopefully, basketball has helped give you the tools for life and how to work hard and be successful, which that's what you've seen in this community with, right. with adults. Good work ethic. Too, can, I, can I say just a second, Ms. Carroll, that one thing that impressed Mr. Nichols and myself too uh, on, on, on Mr. Brandon was the amount of athletes that he has, I want to say success stories, if you will, in the D1 level and have gone on to college and collegiate levels and have excelled there. 
And that's a, that's a legacy of any coach or, or any teacher uh, of ourselves is those who've gone on and have excelled in their, in, in their future. And so that, that impressed me a lot about those, those names that we, we, I saw on, that, on, on, our, on uh, his listing of, of accomplishments. And it's not as the people and that have gone on and have done and gone successfully, whether it's in basketball or in life in general. Right, and it's, something, and it's something that he can take into the locker room of these athletes that he's got coming up right now and say, hey, look, this is who, who's gone on to college under me, and those kids are going to get stars in their eyes, and they're going to work hard, you know, and you're going to get the best of the best, you know. Best don't don't, don't want to give the, uh, the big head here. No. <laughs> but, no. But, I, no. But I'm saying what I'm no, saying. No, we're here, just but, telling what we expect. But there's a lot of coaches out well. there that can't, that can't do that. Right. You know, they don't, they've not been – as experienced and it took a lot of hard work for and I guarantee you he'll sit here and tell you how hard work you know what kind of dedication and stuff that he had to put into it to, so to get to that, that point that's what impressed me as much as as, as anything else well and it's so because of the, the human connection that we have it's also the issue of not just the players but you are dealing with the parents and as all parents and I was one Everybody thinks their kid's the best. <laughs> but you know, it boils down to a select few. I mean, it does. And that's just the way it is. And unfortunately, uh, there's some that maybe the talent's a little greater when, <laughs> before they get to them, but um, that's just part of any kind of sports. The one thing that I thought was so great, and I still do, is we uh, increased the number of sports at our high school. You had kids that couldn't play basketball or football right. because of right. the numbers, but then you had cross country, you had soccer, tennis. Volleyball. Volleyball, I think they even have a fishing. We have a, ba we have a bass fishing team right now. Hey, come on. That, is, that are doing <laughs> phenomenal things. Junior, our trap team. We have a trap team right. that is, has gone to national competition. So we have a lot to be proud of in Cannon County and even more to be prouder as we move forward in Cannon County schools. So, but I will talk about some of his you know, success stories and the human connection that he had with some of his players in, in, at, at the collegiate level. Well, thank you for that. You're reading my mind. And, and <laughs> now, there, have, there, there have been... Great minds think alike. <laughs> there have been, from the very start, of. Uh, and I'll make this story as short as I can, but one of the better players I had coached, uh, and I had her her uh, seventh, eighth, and ninth grade year at Mount Juliet, and uh, her name uh, is Amanda Butler. Uh, that, that name, uh, she played uh, at Mount Juliet High School, then she went on and played at the University of Florida. She left University of Florida and coached a couple of other stints, and then came back and was the head coach at the University of Florida for eight, nine seasons, ten seasons. Uh, I still stay in touch with her and communicate, and her, even her mom and dad. Uh, they just they were great people to me. I was the one about like my second year. And uh, so Amanda Butler is, is one that, you know, probably wasn't mentioned. And she, uh, we still great friends now. And, and, uh, and she is now at Clemson. Head coach you know, uh, uh, Clemson, and uh, there are there is um, a couple of uh, players there that are have local ties to Rutherford County. Mm -hmm. Kendall Spray played for us at Wilson Central. The last two years I was at Wilson Central, she was a freshman and sophomore. And uh, as a sophomore, she played. She was a, she's in fact she holds the she holds the Tibbs Double A record for three point is made in a season and uh and so um she's up there with amanda and i'm like i've got a uh, two players one's a head coach and then ex players and then one that's playing mm -hmm. that tells you a little bit i've kind of I've, I've been in this a while i guess <laughs> and I'm, I'm just 49 i mean how's that happen <laughs> but anyway well, we may need to look at your math skills <laughs> <laughs> but but Kendall Spray is up there and, and, and doing a lot for, for they're you know uh, together and um, 
uh, there's probably some that I didn't list, but a lot of those were local and they were missed basketballs and that type of things. But they're, you know, uh, you go back like with, with Coach Ensel at Shevable and that run that he had and all the players that went through there. And you just look at what they, what they did in life. A lot of them were very successful in life and it's, it's, it, it really pay, you know, really pays off, I think, to work hard and, and uh, a diligent hand, I think, is what, the, what we're told, so. Okay, Freddie, now I'm going to switch to you because Go I got two other here. guests waiting. Um, <laughs> Maybe they can wait a little while. You are, well, I'll let you tell them that. <laughs> I'll tell my good friends. I'll see hey, listen. You are going to have tryouts right. starting yeah, yeah, right. tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, 10 o'clock, 10 to 11, will be the freshmen and sophomores. And uh, uh, physical has, needs to be in hand there with that. And, and we are very aware. We, we've discussed uh, the times when we with COVID, and, and that we, we're prepared for that. On Friday, 10 o'clock, 10 to 11, will be juniors and seniors. So that's our, our tryout schedule for the for the end of the week here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when, say, school starts, you got new students coming in, stuff like that, are they gonna be able to maybe catch on or are you just basically taking what you've got coming in in the summer? Well, you know, we'll, we'll um, I don't, we don't know, I, I was talking to Mr. Nichols yesterday yeah. about tryouts, how many should we expect? I'm, I'm trying to get all this right. in my mind now. When school when school starts, um, in fact, I've I've already heard that there may be uh, uh, there's been a few calls and uh, that they may want to come play basketball here in, in Cannon County. Well, you know you 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 can't deny a child who comes in or a young lady right. who comes in to uh, school not to participate. I mean that's part of the experience. So I would think that they would be, I mean, if they're... That's what we do with other sports. Yeah, yeah that's what I, I was saying, in other sports, you... Football, basketball, that's baseball, right. that's right. whatever I mean. the sport, that's what we do, is, yeah. is they come in, and there's certainly TWSW uh, rules that have to, we, we certainly will, will, will abide by and go by, but there are certain things when you get a transfer student in, or someone who has moved in, and uh, there, we follow those, those procedures for every sport, right. whether it's basketball or baseball or any, any, any sport. That they come in and they're, they're given an opportunity to to participate and to to be a member of that of that team. Uh, homeschooling is very big right now too. So uh, if anybody's watching on homeschooling, they've got to talk to the high school and get with Mr. Nichols by August the fifth for any homeschooler who wants to do that. And that's why we send this uh, these these alerts out to every everybody about uh, about trials because they may be homeschoolers and there are certain Things that we have to abide by according to the WSWA rules about homeschooling that we that the homeschoolers that come in and participate. But they can so, try but out. They can try out absolutely, and that uh, and it's great to seeing seeing you know girls teams, boys teams, all of our teams, uh, you know, out where they can now with the COVID rules that the governor has has just announced uh, back a couple of weeks ago that now that we're allowed practices, uh, football practices starting today. And in basketball, basketball tryouts and other sports are trying out, and um, and all that's being coordinated under the COVID conditions and, and you know, social distancing. And uh, basically, we're doing teams of, of no more than ten, meaning the coach itself. So no more than nine in any one segment of those practices are going on. That's why a coach is doing that with the with his freshman and sophomore to, tomorrow and juniors and seniors the, the following day. So this thing looks, school's gonna look different, I'll just tell you. It is, everything is. We can do a whole segue on that and do a whole, whole session on that. And won't have to bore the coach about that, but, but we are dealing in a different environment now than we were previous to March 13th. And since March 13th, that's the last day we had kids, students at, Cannon County, at any Cannon County school. And things are different now than they were on March the 13th. Uh, I'd like to commend the high school, uh, whole team at the high school uh, on our graduation that was broadcast here on DTC. 
and uh, that was just tremendous. But a lot of hard work had to take place. That was that unique. Time. A lot of people involved, wasn't it? And it was unique. Uh, hey, a parade, and that's what I told some of those seniors. I said, "Who got a? Who's ever gotten a graduation <laughs> parade? I mean, nobody in the history of County County Schools has that happened." So. What I'd like to, you know, say that to everybody is be patient with us, and that's what we've talked around all along. It's not going to look like it did before because nothing's going to look like what. No, it they are. It isn't. You know, with between Mr. masks and you know six, six foot separations and and all of that is, uh, and then you look at sports that, you know, have contact, and there's different rules now about contact sports that what happens to happen, and uh, they'll be going through. Uh, our boys already experienced that. We're uh, we're having to desanitize basketballs. Now, who would have ever thought, and, and Coach has been around a little bit, well, maybe a little bit longer than I have, but uh, who would have ever thought we were going to have to desanitize basketballs? And that's just where we are, or desanitize a football or baseball. <laughs> well, you've just now added an extra manager for that responsibility, <laughs> exactly. right? That you may have several Your job managers. Is to wipe it off yeah. and sanitize a basketball. And, but that's where we're that's where we're at, and there's a lot of conjecture about school starting back, and we'll do a whole show on that, Carolyn, that, about, right. about that. But I will have you back before August. Okay. And Thank good you. luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Like I say, as far as for the virus, uh, listen, it's going to change the way a lot of things are done. So. Um, you got to keep that in mind this year because no one knows for sure. Now I have two ladies that are have instrumental jobs in our county too. Uh, one of them is Miss Deborah Leach, and she is the director of the senior center. And we have Marsha Petty, who is the director of the library. And Marsha, we'll start with you. Um, are you open? We are open. Um, we're open, abbreviated hours from 9 o'clock to 3.30, so we can clean afterwards. Mm -hmm. And then um, right now we're closed on Wednesdays. That's the new thing. And um, on Saturdays we close at 2. So our hours have changed just a little for the month of June. I'm hoping to expand it in July. But uh, so Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, 9 to 3.30. Wednesday closed, Saturday 9 to 2. Okay. So, and and you, the computers are open. You can come in, use the computer. We're not really opening the stacks of books yet, but you can come and ask us, and we'll go get the books and bring them out to you, we'll bring them up to the desk. The copy machine is open. You can just come in and use the copy machine. So. Um, and we do ask, you do ask that people social distance as much yes. as possible and yes. wear the mask too. Yes. Yes. Okay. And everybody has been really, really good about wearing their masks. And yeah. Just, it's, it's just a courtesy to the staff that has to work that they feel more comfortable if that other person is wearing a mask. And so it's Well, nice. it's just much for your own protection and the other person's yeah. protection too. But I'll say, so. you know, everyone that's come to the library pretty much they wear their masks and that's it's been nice, so. So there hasn't we're, been any confrontations about it. <laughs> so, you know, we're, it's, it's kind of a slow process. We're getting there. But I know. We are, we are open. Come in. We'll try and do whatever you need. Okay, Deborah, we're really short on time, and okay. I'm sorry. It's fine. But the senior center is also closed at this time, yes, right? Yes, we are closed to the public, the staff. Um, some of us are working. Um, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4, our regular um, hours, but we are still closed to the public, and that is per the governor's executive order. It very specifically mentions senior centers are to remain closed. So unfortunately, uh, we, um, but we want to comply, certainly, because it is for safety, the safety of our seniors, well, as well as our community. And we don't know what the future is going to bring. That's the whole thing. Everybody wants to know exact dates for things. And right now, as it stands, we don't know exact dates because we don't know if this is going to pop up again. You know, this COVID thing, it's not over. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I'm just hoping 
that they come up with something more definite than what they have now to be able to control it. Right. But I think your future normals are going to be different than the normal you knew. So these are just adjustments we got to make, and especially when you're dealing with just like you, you're dealing with people in that upper uh, age range, 60 you know, and so, older. right. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of them have conditions that they're bringing in, so. So they're at higher risk um, if they were to contract the um, virus, they're at higher risk. Yes, they are. So. So we have to be careful and be cautious. But I will say that we do still have good old days scheduled for the 28th well, and I think 29th every, of August. So. I think everybody are just like schools. You've got to plan. Yes. It may change between now and then, mm -hmm. but you still have to have those plans. You know, <laughs> you do. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> now, uh, before we run out of time, and I'll get back to you all, but I just got a directive today about uh, the small businesses. Mm -hmm. There are more, there is more money out there if you qualify to be able to help you. And um, I'll name off some of the businesses that if you qualify that this money will go to, because it is for the smaller business. It's barber shops, beauty shops, nail salons, tattoo parlors, spas, other personal, um, businesses like fitness centers, restaurants, bars, hotels, and, tra and other travel accommodations, theaters, auditoriums, performing arts centers, and similar facilities, museums, zoos, uh, promoters of performing arts, sports, and similar events, agents and managers of artists, athletes, and entertainers and independent artists, uh, writers, and performers. <clears throat> and I believe that the thing that will make you qualify is you have to have sales of 500000 or less in a year. Now, I'd say most of our businesses probably fall into that mm -hmm. category, don't you? Mm -hmm. And they take this off your sales tax. That's how they determine. Yeah, and you have to, isn't it 25% less than your income from right. last year? Right, right. It is. You have to have a loss of 25%. Yeah. If it's less than 25%, it's furniture stores, clothing stores, shoe stores, jewelry, luggage, sporting goods, hobby, musical, bookstores, department stores, office supply, stationery, Used merchandise. Mm -hmm. Now that's got to be antique stores. That's got to be that. Mm -hmm. pawn shops. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And on that note, I will tell you because I've had a lot of calls about this. Goodwill no longer has a truck in Cannon County, but our thrift store that is run by the First Methodist Church and it helps their backpack program to finance that, but it did open up yesterday. Mm -hmm. And there's a limit to how many people can be in the store at one time, but I think that's the same as it is most places right now. Now, Deborah, on you, there was a lot of trip. You're not having music night at this mm -hmm. time. No, we're not. And a lot of your um, trips that you had planned are being moved on down yes. the line. Um, most all of them are being rescheduled to 2021. And uh, that is with the travel companies, the cruise lines um, due to COVID. So if you are interested in travel, um, we do still have a, several trips to offer. It's just that they the dates have been moved right. out. Um, we do still have our Texas tour scheduled in October. Um, it was scheduled in March. We moved it to October. It is still uh, booked in October. So if anybody would like to join that tour, they can. So, um, okay. but yeah, travel's been limited. Um, okay, some of the other things that I've had calls on, good old days is one of them. Okay. The other one is the cruise in that the chamber usually has um, on the last Friday of every month 
we've canceled two. I was planning on having the one in July, but we have it around the square. And even though our courthouse is open to the public at this time, um, the county executive has informed me that according to the directives from the governor, that they are not to have any events on county property of 50 or more. And so that is until July 1st. So that means that I will be canceling the one for June and we will begin our cruise ends in July on the fourth Saturday. And I believe that that is um, uh, the 25th and it'll be four to seven around the courthouse in Woodbury. Uh, the Art Center will be open to the public starting June 9th. The hours will be Thursday, Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 2 p.m., 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And Junior Conservatory will be held, and they've had a lot of calls about that. And that will be June 15th through the 26th. And of course, those are your, that's your junior conservatory for younger children, but the way they have it broken down, they're in different classes, so it won't be everyone together. But that's how they always do that. So the senior conservatory will be held July 6th through the 17th, and their shows and concerts um, are still yet to have a definite schedule for those but you can always call the Art Center at 615-563-2787 if you need more information on all of that. Uh, calls about the farmer's market. This has nothing to do with the COVID virus. <laughs> it has to do with they've had so much rain that they can't get the gardens to produce what they need to bring to the farmer's market. But the last that I heard was that they're hoping the third week or the end of June, they should have some produce that they can bring for that. Oh. And of course, that's located in the parking lot of the Art Center. Yes. They've actually had a couple producers come through and put some of their fruits and vegetables already. Who was it? Uh, Harold Duggan, I believe. Oh yeah, yeah, Harold he's, usually does, and he yeah. was one I didn't think was going to be ready. Yeah, Were they ready. there Saturday? I believe so. In fact, I talked to Bruce back uh, middle of May, and he informed me that they're going to start first of June with Harold. You know, just a few. Yeah. And then while they're waiting for the rest to come up with theirs, so. Well, I talked to him last week, and he didn't know. No. Well. <laughs> but that's Harold okay. Was there. I'll take your word. <laughs> well. It doesn't hurt to stop by on Saturday morning. If you're driving by, just usually get look. there early. Yeah. Um, the Chamber of Commerce will also open. I have been coming in a couple of days a week, but not to the public, just answering the phone, checking the emails. But um, I will be opening it up to the public on June 9th, and it will be Tuesday through Friday, 8 to 12, which is what our normal hours were anyway. And the art center, I mean, the chamber office is located in the art center. So that's one reason I'm kind of going same time they do. The Lions Club Walking Horse Show is scheduled for July 4th as usual. There may be some changes in that show due to the uh, virus, but as far as I know, that is still a go. It is at the Horse Show Arena at the fairgrounds. And uh, if you want more information on that, you can go ahead and call the chamber office and I'll give you the number of who you need to call regarding that. And the last I heard, the fireworks was still gonna be on July 4th in town. I don't know that they will be having the activities in Dillon Park as usual. Um, because of the virus, they won't, they're asking everybody to kind of keep their distance, but you can see the fireworks from anywhere in Woodbury, <clears throat> especially over where they're gonna have the horses. <laughs> Cannon County Courthouse, I told you, is open to the public. 
June 6th through the 12th, and I know this may not be on the air by then, but um, is free fishing uh, days. And the annual fishing rodeo for this year has been canceled. However, Mayor Andy Duggan has informed me they are still releasing fish into the Stones River, and anyone can fish the banks for that fish, man, woman, child, grandpa, grandma, anybody, and uh, they just ask you to keep social distance uh, for that event. Most of our restaurants in Cannon County, boutiques and, and antique stores are open for business. You can get a haircut. The grocery stores have never closed, and they're going strong. And yes, there is toilet paper. You can get toilet paper. That's always been. <laughs> okay, ladies, is there anything else you wish to say? We had a little more time than I thought. <laughs> no. Nothing coming up. I know, you know, we usually do our summer reading program. Right. And what we're hoping is to move it into July. And um, I'm not sure we'll be able to do any programs, but we do um, maybe make some fun things for the kids that they can pick up. Yeah. But, uh, we're working on it. So. Well, it's, like I say, it's new times for everybody, just like, and you're expecting July 16th. Uh, July 6th is oh, the 6th. date that our okay. board has set to look at reopening again. Of course, that will depend on the next executive order from the governor. Right. Um, also, the Tennessee Commission on Aging um, as well will be providing us some guidance as well as to what to do. But we are hopeful that we can open reopen soon. Okay. Well, this is good. Keith? <laughs> What are you doing? I'm just sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> well, other than that, you got anything you need to report on? Well, we've got budget hearings going on. We found out that the 3% uh, increase for employees from the county might be in a little bit of jeopardy because the uh, medical insurance went up. Uh, of course. From Schools are having, as Freddie Curtis mentioned, schools are having a little bit of a difficult time. There might be some cuts, so kind of just like COVID-19, just kind of wait and see. And tomorrow's the commissioner's meeting. Yes, tomorrow is the commissioner's meeting. There won't be a budget passed tomorrow, but Why it's uh, 5, 5.30. Well, I believe the Nashville um, Commission met for 11 hours last night. They were there all night mm. discussing the budget and taxes. I don't think we'll have this that this year. I don't think we're going to wait till the last minute this year. And I don't think if we do wait till the last minute that it will be a 12-hour standstill this year. Mm. We've got to appoint a new commissioner for the 5th District uh, because Lacey Buchanan resigned. And then I well, that I, was a we'll conflict of interest yes. for yeah, her. Yeah, we'll get an update to. tomorrow, tomorrow, or Thursday night, about who, who might be, filling that. And it'll be an interesting thing because Lacey's still on the ballot, and so Lacey, unless there's a write-in that beats Lacey Buchanan, she will be back as the fifth district, and she'll have to resign, and you know. So. And they'll appoint somebody. Isn't right? politics fun? <laughs> uh, well, I guess that's a good word for it. I don't know. But anyway, I just want to say in closing that, um, you know, this virus is not over. And so we have to be aware and use common sense. We need to listen to our scientists and our doctors about what this is all about. And, what, and these are the people that work every day to try to come up with either a vaccine or tell us how to deal with this new normal, because it will be. And this isn't the first pandemic that uh, our world has had, but we certainly don't want to act like we're bulletproof and that we can't get this because it's not sparing any ages. So we just ask everybody to be safe 
and consider the next person. And we will see you in July.